What's up, guys? It's your man, MP, and today I wanted to give you guys an update and answer a lot of the questions from the video that everybody's been talking about, the cheating fisherman. So let's get into it. So the first question I wanted to answer for you guys is how did the cheating fisherman get caught? So here is tournament director Jason Fisher, who recently did an interview. In his interview, one of the first things he talked about is how people were asking him, hey, like, how did it come about that these guys got caught? Basically, Jason was very up to date on where the standings everyone were and everything and how much weight uh, Jake and Chase needed to win. So when he saw their fish, he said they looked like typical walleye. They looked like about four pound, five pound fish. But... When he weighed them and they were like eight pound fish, he immediately knew something was suspicious. These guys actually only needed over 16 pounds to win, but they were over 30 pounds in weight for their fish. Jason was expecting about a 20 pound bag of fish from these guys from the size of them, and it turned out to be over 33 pounds. Immediately, Jason thought there's no way this could be happening. He said he's caught eight pound walleye before fishing with his buddies and it was way bigger than the fish he's seeing in this bucket. And this is when he told Jake and Chase to hang out for a little bit because he wanted to take some photos of the fish. This is also when he started hearing rumbling from the crowd. The crowd started getting restless because they thought something was up too. Someone actually yelled out, yeah, right. So from here, Jason wanted to check these fish out. He actually got some protest from Jake or Chase, and they said, Are you serious? This has to stop. But he told them, Yeah, I am serious. I want to take a look at the fish. And he wanted to see mainly if they were alive. And they were not. They were dead. So from there, he wanted to feel if the fish were firm, because he said live walleye kind of feel firm. But once he squeezed the fish, he felt some objects in the belly, like he felt something solid. Once he felt something solid in the bellies, he asked one of his guys for a knife. When he cut the belly open, he immediately found the lead weight. Jason said he was so pissed that he actually yelled, get the fuck out of here. After that is when you see the mob of angry fishermen. So all that information came from a recent interview that Jason did on how these guys got caught. Basically, when you've been fishing as long as a lot of these guys have been they can kind of tell like how much a fish is going to weigh just by looking at them. And once he saw the fish and once he saw how much they weighed, he immediately got suspicious. And then when he wanted to look at them and squeeze their bellies, he felt something solid. After watching Jason's interview and uh, watching another video where he put out an official statement, you know, honestly, he seems like a good guy, and you can tell he actually cares about the fishermen and trying to be fair to everyone. Now, the second most asked question probably was, what's going to happen to these guys? A lot of people were kind of making jokes about, uh, you know, what, call the police for fishing? Yeah, right, that's dumb. But they actually may be charged with a felony. The prosecutor for this county is Mike O'Malley, and he said that his staff is actually going to be talking to the Ohio Department of National Resources and that they take this really seriously. He says that these individuals will be held accountable. As of today, it's an open investigation. And taking one look at Mike O'Malley, he doesn't look like he plays at all. As far as what's going to happen with them with fishing tournaments, as of now, officials say they will be persona non grata at these tournaments for the foreseeable future, meaning they will be unwelcome. They won't be allowed to fish. Don't feel bad if you had to look up what persona non grata means. I know I did. A lot of you guys definitely asked, how did these guys make it out of there without getting their asses kicked? Well... I read that tournament director Jason is also a police officer in the Cleveland area. There was also a fisherman who was competing who was law enforcement. He kind of took control of the scene. And then these guys also had a police escort to their truck. Now, another question we had is, has this happened before? And apparently it has. Uh, these guys just in 2018, Robert Dennett, 
and Cameron Wooden were competing in a fishing tournament in Lake Powell, and they were actually busted because they were using fish that they had taken from a different area in a place called Quail Creek. They were actually caught, and both guys were charged with third-degree felonies of bribery slash influencing a public contest, and they also received a misdemeanor charge of releasing aquatic wildlife and a Class B misdemeanor charge of unlawful captivity of live aquatic wildlife. Each guy had to pay $2,500, another $500 on top of that, 48 hours community service, two years court ordered no hunting, and five years no fishing. But the most famous cheating fisherman of all is a guy named Mike Long. A lot of you guys mentioned him in the comments. Apparently he was a fishing legend before he got caught by someone who was an old fishing partner of his. From what I read, he used to raise fish in fish tanks and then tie them to trees and stuff in the lakes. He would then put them on his hooks and make it look like he caught them. This is called snagging. So there's good news and bad news for Jake Runyon and Chase Kaminsky. The good news is neither one of the people I just talked about went to jail. The bad news is the guys from Lake Powell actually did get charged and uh, one of the charges was a felony. So we're going to have to see what happens with these guys. I'll definitely keep you guys posted. I see how interested everyone is in this. The interview Jason Fisher did with Big Water Fishing is actually over an hour long, so you can get a lot of information from there also. Another question someone asked is, what happens to all the fish after the competitions? So typically, the people who compete in these competitions donate their fish. Once these fish are donated, they're given to soup kitchens and shelters. I thought this was really cool. I think if you're a homeless person and you haven't really been eating well or hasn't been eating enough, getting something like a nice bowl of fish stew that, you know, maybe has like some potatoes, carrots, and veggies in it, that's probably really good. That's probably like food for the soul for them. So shout out to the honest fishermen who actually donate their fish. I'm a big fan of fish stew myself. But Jake Runyon and Chase Kaminsky apparently never donated their fish. Gee, I wonder why. Unfortunately, the fish used here probably wouldn't be able to be used or donated simply because you might get lead poisoning. But as always, guys, I definitely appreciate you watching. We post a lot of random content. So if you like these type of videos and you see the subscribe, like, and notification button about to snag some fish, make sure you give them a push. Thanks again for watching.